Hello and welcome to the Terry White Tech Blog. Today we're here to take a look at the Hyperdrive Color Space UDMA Photo Backup Device. Now what is this? Basically it's a device that has a hard drive in it. It's got a standard um, laptop hard drive in it, SATA drive. On one side you've got a compact flash um, card reader and on the other side you've got a SD card reader of course which you can adapt to memory stick and other formats as well as the uh, compact flash format as well. Um, you also have a USB port for plugging it into your computer to get the um, get the photos off of this once you've backed them up and the idea is that when you're out on vacation when you're out in the field instead of taking your computer with you on site you can just have this in your pocket or, or um, computer bag or, or well actually it would be your camera bag and then uh, you just simply take your memory card out of your camera plug it into the device and back it up onto the hard drive in the device as a means of two things. One, of course, to back up your important photos so that you have them more in more than one place. And also, since there's a nice color LCD screen here, the ability to preview your, your images. So let's go ahead and boot it up, and that way we'll get an idea of how long it takes to fire up here. And let's go ahead and make sure I turn it on. So starting now. And of course, uh, it gives us a nice kind of color display as their logo um, comes up. And waiting, 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 waiting. And it is now available to us and ready to go. So, what can you do? Well, like I said, you can put your memory card in and back it up. And because it's UDMA based, if you have a relatively fast card, it will back it up in record time. Now I have 200 RAW files on here from my Nikon D700. And those RAW files backed up to this device, which of course can display both RAW and JPEG. It backed it up in about a minute and 29 seconds. So that was, I was amazed at how quickly that happened. Now I'm gonna go in and we're gonna go ahead and take a look at them. So because not only can you back them up, of course, but you can also browse them. So we'll just navigate the menu. And the thing that cracked me up was apparently the format they're using is very Windows DOS-like because it's giving me a C drive, it's letting me navigate to the folders on that C drive, and there's my DCMI folder, and then it will show me the subfolder in there. So it's literally copied the exact folder structure off the card, and there are my raw thumbnails that come in. Now, of course, once I, uh, I can navigate to a particular thumbnail that I want to see, and of course, I can tap that thumbnail, and then that will display the image full size. Now, in this case, that like I said, it's a raw file, and the thing that they tout is the fact that even as the raw formats come out, you'll be able to update the firmware in here to accommodate new raw files that they don't yet support uh, in the shipping version. All right, so you can navigate to your images, now, these images that we're looking at now, they're coming up pretty quick, and that's because I've already previewed them once. So, once. so I'm going to keep going, and you notice that that one took a few seconds longer. That one had not been rendered yet. So now I'm seeing that it does take a minute to render what I'm assuming is probably a JPEG preview so that you can then see the images. Now, this particular device uh, is kind of bare bones. It, it's really just a hard drive for backing up and a 3-inch L LCD screen for viewing your images. Now, as far as the quality and size of the screen, I, I knew it was smaller than the Epson P6000 that I had been using, but I didn't realize how much smaller it was going to be until I actually got it. And really, in all honesty, this LCD is no bigger or smaller than the one on the back of my D700. They're both three inch LCDs. So if your main goal is to not only back up your images, but see them larger, then this device is probably not gonna be for you. Because again, this uh, LCD screen is no bigger than what's on the back of the camera. There we are. So now we're looking at relatively the same image on both screens. And I also got to be honest that the even though it's slightly bigger in display because of the, the uh, 
display information at the bottom of the uh, Nikon screen. It's even a crisper display on the Nikon screen than the one they used on the uh, color space. The color space LCD screen is just barely usable. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not a high quality display. It's really just to give you a quick idea of what the image looks like that you shot, but uh, nothing special about the display whatsoever. As a matter of fact, let's compare it. So here I have my uh, long-standing companion that I travel with, which is the Epson P6000. So let's go ahead and fire that up. And uh, we'll also note that the Epson definitely boots up faster. So it only took a couple seconds and we're there. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, go into the same folder, same folder of images that we were just looking at on um, the first device and the hyperspace. And now we're looking at So side by side, the Epson display is not only bigger, but also a better display. And of course, the Epson P6000, P7000, and all the P, or all the uh, devices in this category have the same thing, both a compact flash and SD slot on the device itself. Now, here's the thing. You're probably saying, well, if you already have a P6000, why are you even talking about this new device that seems to have a smaller and not as good screen? Well, here's the thing about this, and it's the price. The color space... Uh, UDMA devices start at 249 without a drive because again you can put your own hard drive in there if you already have a notebook SATA drive that you want to use. I got the one for 299 which comes with and don't uh, I'll, I'll say it specifically on my blog but I think it was like a hundred and sixty or 120 gigabyte drive. This P6000 is hundreds of dollars more for an 80 gig drive and if you go up to their next version which is the 160 gig drive it's, it gets into the $600 range so their most expensive color space device which has a 500 gig drive in it is less than the P6000 which only has an 80 gig drive in it so if you're looking for a less expensive alternative to the P6000 or P7000 then this is going to be it if you're looking for a better screen and reviewing capability, then the Epson or a laptop is going to be it. But for the money, this is definitely going to be the way to go. And by the way, even if I now decide I want to put in a larger hard drive, I'm allowed to. I'm allowed to take this off, put in whatever size SATA notebook drive I want. And that's the adva real advantage of this. So again, if you're looking for speed, which by the way, 1 minute 29 seconds to back up the card here, three minutes 30 some odd seconds to back it up on the Epson so the UDMA is for the high-speed transfer much slower on the Epson to back up the cards and much more expensive on the Epson to actually use so that's it for this video report of the color space UDMA backup device you'll find more information on my blog more details the actual times and all that I can find at terrywhite.com slash techblog. Thanks for watching.